So, here's what we can conclude from this. And I can go through more and more examples if I want to. Okay? 5 to the power of a half, that's the square root of 5. That's my new definition, my new way of writing. It's part of why we did thirds before. Right? 5 to the power of a third is the cube root of 5. Uh, what would you guess 5 to the power of a quarter is? Now, it doesn't have a nice neat name like square root or cube root. Um, just like this is cubed and this is squared, but when the power is 4, you just say to the power of 4. So we would call this the fourth root of 5. It's the number where if you multiply it by itself four times, you'll get 5. Okay? Uh, 5 to the power of 1 over, I don't know, 100. That's big. You can actually go to your calculator if you've got it there. <laughs> go to your calculator for a second. <laughs> now, you can punch this into your calculator and find out what's going on. I'm going to put in 5, and then the power button is right next to the square button. Do you see it there? Right. So punch that in. And once you have your little square up there, then input in there 1 over 100. Okay. Now, before you hit equals, I want you to make a prediction. What do you think it will be? 5, 2, Okay. So I'm going to hit equals. And this is what my calculator tells me. Do you get the same thing? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Now, what does this mean? How does this work? Is that what you anticipated? Here's the idea. This number here, when you multiply it by itself, it gets a little bit bigger. Do you see that? See, it's like if I multiply one by itself over and over again, it wouldn't change. If I multiply a number that's slightly bigger, it will increase in size every time I do it. If you do it a hundred times, then it will get big enough to climb back up to five. We would call this. We don't have my black. We would call this the one hundredth root of five. It's the number you multiply by itself a hundred times to give you five. So now I'm going to stop counting numbers. I'm going to generalize. If I have five, any number, to the power of one over n. If n is two, I'll get the square root. If n is 3, I'll get the cube root. If n is 4, I'll get the fourth root, and so on. This is called the nth root of 5. That's a bit of a tongue twister. But I'm going to write it down because that's literally the way they say it. The nth root of 5. Okay? So, remember we said weird. Uh, 5 to the power of 0, you don't multiply it by itself any times, you have 1. 5 to the power of a half, it's kind of like halfway to 5. You do it again, you'll get 5. So what do you think this would be? 5 to the power of 2 thirds? Huh. What do you reckon, Isabel? Three, 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 three. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. So there's a lot of different ways that I can think about this. There are at least two that are important for you to um, make sure you grasp. I'm going to write both of them and I'd like you to as well. Uh, I'm going to continue up here because I know I'm going to run out of space down there. Um, two thirds. Do you agree that it is two times a third? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, I can write this in a couple of different ways. I can write it as 5 squared to the power of 3rd. Does that make sense? Like, do you see, this is a law that you've been using already. When you've got brackets, you just multiply those powers together. Right? So, that's the cube root of 25. Does that make sense? Or alternatively... Can you see on this line, I'm squaring first, 
and then I'm doing the power of a third after. I could do it in a different order too. I could do the power of a third and then square it. So instead of the cube root of 25, I could have the cube root of 5 squared. They're all the same thing. If you go ahead, you go to your calculator, punch this in. In fact, your calculator even has, I believe, a cube root button. Uh, mine is under the cube button, so you can go shift and that weird square root sign, right? If you go shift, you'll get the 3 appearing. It's the cube root, okay? Uh, and then you can plug these numbers in. For example, the cube root of 25 is this number. 2.92. Okay. So you can see that. Now I'm interested by the way, the cube root of 25 is really, really small. Are you surprised by how small it is? But actually it shouldn't be that surprising because what's the cube root of say 27? The cube root of 27? It's just 3. 3 times 3 times 3 gives you 27. Well these are pretty close aren't they? Right? It's just like a 3. Just a little bit. So that instead of landing on 27, you land on 25. Okay. 